Now it is to create Bollywood quality cinematic footage. You don't necessarily need expensive gear or a big crew. Right now in my hands, I have the gimbal from Moza, the A-Cross S, that costs around 200 euros. And on top of it, I've mounted the Sony ZV-1 Mark II that costs under 1,000 euros. The next thing we need is a vibrant city like the beautiful city of Amsterdam. But that is not all we need. In order to create a Bollywood movie, we obviously need an Indian actor. And you can find those pretty much anywhere in any cities these days. All we have to do is look around. Let's have a look. Uh, there is one, man. Hey, man, how you doing, bro? You want to be my film, man? Come on, I just want to film you, bro. Come on. What's up fam? I'm super pumped to break down the food chase scene we filmed in Amsterdam using totally affordable gear. What we used was the Moza A-Cross S, what you see right here. And we also had the Sony ZV-1 Mark II filming parts of the chase, but the main responsible, the main gear filming that, you know, whole chase behind the scenes was the Sony A7S III mounted on the RS3 to create those shots. But that being said, I got some pretty damn stabilized footage using only a gimbal that costs around 200 euros. The Moza A-Cross S gimbal right here comes at an affordable price at 209 in the market right now. And I really could mount my Sony A7S III and that is what I did. That's how I filmed my whole home studio video, but I was, you know, usually mainly creating really slow, smooth gimbal shots with this setup. I probably wouldn't be doing those Amsterdam sprints we were doing with the Sony A7S III mounted on this thing. But anything alongside of the Sony ZV-1 or the Sony ZV-1 Mark II, the Sony ZE-1 or the Sony Alpha 6300 or the 6400, for example, as you can see, it's doing a pretty good job right here. So with an investment just around 1,000 euros in gear, you know, you got yourself a cinematic setup that allows you to create food chase scenes straight out of a Hollywood film. Especially when you want to travel light, I think this is like a setup like this is definitely your go-to setup to create those really nice travel cinematic footage. So let me tell you how I film this chase using this gear and let's start with the whole planning process, all right? So I chose Amsterdam as the backdrop for this whole video, mainly because of its unique structure and the tight alleyways and the scenic canals. We all know location plays a huge role setting the right atmosphere for any movie and Amsterdam definitely provided us with that perfect environment that we needed. Now, what do we need next? Of course, we needed a story. Since this is a YouTube video and we didn't have the luxury of time and a big budget, I wanted to keep this story very simple but yet entertaining, which I know is not that easy to do. So I came up with a quick storyline involving myself and Rahul, the guy who I chased after, and we had to have a reason for this chase, of course. So I came up with this last minute idea that instead of saying how to create Hollywood quality film, let me just say Bollywood instead of Hollywood. And then I would connect it to an Indian guy who was my friend Rahul, who I decided to grab randomly from the street, which added a whole comedic twist in the whole scenario. Bro, come on, man. I just want to film you, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> Now this chase needed an ending and due to our time limitations, I opt for the simplest ending where I just end up losing Raul at the end of the chase. Guys, of course it would have been amazing to introduce, you know, more interactions and altercations with people, the surroundings, but the truth of the matter is, you know, we had to work what we had and let me tell you, time was running out very fast. Now let's break down the actual filming process, okay? Now the chase was filmed from two perspectives. One perspective captured my character's desire to have an Indian guy act in my film Film, so I find an Indian guy and I start chasing him. So that was my reason to chase Raul. And I was showcasing it through the lens of the Sony ZV-1 Mark II mounted on the Moza Aircross S right here, this gimbal in my hand, chasing after Raul. Now, of course, the entire chase was also captured on my trusty Sony A7S III using the DJI RS3 gimbal. 
Now, speaking of the Moza Aircross S, who is the sponsor of this video, you know, I'm gonna be really honest with you guys. I was really surprised how this little thing handled those dynamic full sprint chases. And as you can see in the footage, the footage came out really stable, very smooth, and very cinematic. And times are changing fast. It's very unbelievable that we can create such footage with such simple yet affordable setups. This thing was a breeze to balance. And after balancing it, you know, you just pretty much go into the settings and you auto tune it just like you would do the DJI gimbals. And in a matter of seconds, you got yourself a pretty smooth and stable gimbal. Now let's move on to our filming plan, shall we? Although we didn't have a storyboard, which is essential for, you know, cinematic sequences. But again, we have to remember, this was a last minute plan YouTube video. So I decided that we would walk the streets of Amsterdam and come up with shots on the spot based on the locations that we stumbled upon. We all know it's better to have a shot list, of course, but I followed some key principles to ensure that my shots made sense and we followed in a specific order. So for example, if I had Raul entering a tight bag Kelly and I was viewing it from the front I instantly would add two shots one from the back of him running and one close-up of the front capturing Raul's expression while he was running then I would need one or two connecting shots to connect me to the next sequence so for that here I'm filming the characters coming out of the back alley and then I cut to a shot from the front now I can just pretty much change my location to whatever I want and we can repeat this concept for every sequence. Now the Moza Aircross S gimbal was light enough for Raul to hold it in front of his face while he was running in full sprint and I must say the gimbal did an amazing job keeping the shot pretty stable. But as amazing was Raul's performance, wouldn't you say? So shout out to my man Rahul for unveiling his hidden acting talent to us. I mean, I had no idea the guy can act. Look at those expressions. God damn, Rahul. Maybe he'll move back to India to kickstart his acting career, who knows? But I wanna be honest with you guys, a key to a successful chase sequence is not only the dynamic shots themselves, but the real challenge is connecting these chase locations together smoothly and seamlessly to be able to tell a good story. So one trick to be able to achieve that is to use location b-rolls and aerial shots. Use an aerial shot to establish the next location and this just seamlessly connects you to the next scene. A great example here you see that I introduced the canal chase by showing this b-roll of the canal that I had shot on my last trip to Amsterdam. And I show it here and then boom, seamlessly, we are into the next location. Another example was that we started the chase in Dam Square and I used this aerial footage of the square to change the scene and it definitely helped us go on to our next location. Now another technique for connecting these chase sequences together was sound design and music. These two played a huge part in making this chase feel real cinematic. I incorporated sound effects of the environment to all the clips And then I added the right chase music on top of that. And just like that, everything came together. And that is a wrap for today's videos, guys. If you found this video useful, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the notification on, because if you don't, YouTube won't be showing you my next videos. Until we see you the next time, Sean Lamy.